You know, many lives, marriages, and careers are changed in a crusade meeting like the one we're having here in McCormick Place. And tonight we've asked a man from Chattanooga, Tennessee, by the name of Ben Hayden, to share with us what has happened in his life. An attorney, a businessman, a newspaper executive, Mr. Hayden comes to us tonight as the pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Chattanooga, Tennessee, and a speaker on a national radio program heard each Sunday called Changed Lives. We welcome Ben, and as Ben comes to the platform, I want his lovely wife Charlene to stand. She's with us here in Chicago as well. And Charlene, we're glad to have you, and let's welcome them both to McCormick Place tonight, shall we? Ben, A discarded cigar butt would best describe most of my life. A friend had driven me 1,500 miles in 28 hours, and that's a long way to drive, but not when it's to see your mother. She had cancer of the breast that had spread to the area of her throat, and she was choking to death. And in what turned out to be the last minute of her life, she looked at me with a clear mind and with clear eyes. And she said, Ben, I don't know why the Lord is permitting me to undergo the agonies of hell. But if it serves his purpose anywhere on the face of the earth, it's worth it. And within 30 seconds, she was dead. I've never hated a statement as much. To me, it was illogical, unreasonable, ridiculous. And yet one fact I could not deny. She meant it. And at that time, I didn't know anyone who meant anything very much. And all the bitterness of my life surfaced. I didn't go to the store alone until I was seven because I had an impediment of speech. And people had gathered in circles to laugh at me and to ridicule. My father had died as a young man, and now my mother as a young woman. And if there was a God, what kind of a God was he? Some years later, I saw a woman. She was with another man. And instinctively I knew that's the woman, and I loved her. The third time I saw her, we were engaged. The sixth time, we were married, and I was a little slow because he was out of state for three weeks. But within just a little less than a year, we had a marriage just a little better than hell. Not quite bad enough for a divorce, and certainly not good enough for a marriage. And one day I made a flippant statement during an argument. I said, well, if you think that, maybe we ought to go hear Billy Graham. At least he advertises and he's bound to be a great showman. And she agreed. And so we went to the Washington, D.C. Coliseum, fully expecting to be escorted up front to see a great showman. But instead we were escorted to the back, to the last row in the fourth balcony. We listened. I heard the gospel for the first time in power, but I thought it was the power of showmanship. I did not know the power of the Lord. Now the invitation had apparently ended, and then Billy Graham returned to the platform and he said, you may be sitting in the last row of the balcony, he'll wait, you come. 
And at that point, my wife Charlene got out of her seat. And very casually, I assumed she was going to the ladies' room. And then suddenly it hit me. She was going forward. I grabbed her by the skirt and I said, Charlene, sit down. Don't make a fool out of yourself. And she looked at me as only a wife can. And she said, Ben, I don't know what you're going to do with your life, but I know what I'm going to do with mine. She went forward. I stayed. In the next few months, she was the happiest woman I've ever seen. And as she tried to share with me verses of Scripture, not trying to convert me, just to converse with the only other person under the same roof, I would turn on the television or bolt the apartment. That was step two. My background, an attorney and a businessman. And now I resumed a career begun some years earlier in Texas, newspapering, which is a gypsy business. We moved from Ohio to Missouri and then to Tennessee, where I was in charge of a morning, evening, and Sunday newspaper. It had now been 11 years since I had voluntarily darkened a church door. And one morning, for reasons I cannot explain, I said, Charlene, we're going to church. Now, you'd think I meant the worship service. But instead, childhood came out, and I meant Sunday school. And I went to a class taught by Sam Anderson, a merchant. Now, I didn't quite understand what he was saying, but I recognized in him that he meant it like my mother when she died, like Billy Graham in Washington, D.C., and now then, this merchant. And right in the middle of the lesson, my heart was flooded with the thought, God loves me. And I had so hated him. And very quietly to myself, I said, Lord Jesus, if you want me, you've got me. I didn't know a verse of scripture. I didn't know you were supposed to pray. I didn't. I didn't know you were supposed to read the Bible. I didn't. I didn't know you were supposed to tell anyone, and I didn't. But by instinct, I did one thing. I volunteered to teach Sunday school, which I'd never done, and that made us even because they'd never had a volunteer. <laughs> and during the months that followed, and then the years that followed, the Lord laid it on my heart that I was to leave the profession that I loved, not to preach. I'll never be a preacher. But to share in simplicity the forgiveness of sins, the awesomeness of realizing that God the Son came in the flesh to die for me and for you that he assumed my sins and yours, and that on the cross in the mystery of God, he endured my hell and yours. He heals marriages. I now love people I don't even like, and I now know what it is to live in the boldness so that if tomorrow holds death or life, it's one and the same because of Christ. Can you imagine what it would be like to be a pastor but without your wife, without your family? I thank God for the instrument of Billy Graham who blessed first my wife and then me, and then every life 
that the Lord gives me the privilege to touch. He deserves better than indecision or postponement. Christ deserves a positive yes or a negative no before you leave tonight. What a Christ.